William Chatterton Dix wrote a poem asking the question, what child is this? I'd like to read that poem to you as we have been going through and, and trying to discover what child this is. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and donkeys are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. Nails, spears shall pierce him through the cross he bore for me, for you. Hail, hail, the wood word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise a song on high, the virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe the son of Mary. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him laud, the babe, the son of Mary. We look at this passage of scripture, or this um, poem here, and it recalls to our minds the passages of Scripture that we read at this time of year and try to grasp with the question of what child is this? Who is this child? And Dix gives us the answer. He's the babe, the son of Mary. You see, within the baby Jesus was the DNA of Mary. His father was God. But he is the son of Mary. And so we can imagine that part of who Mary was was part of Jesus. And I think God had no accident in creating the Savior of the world with human DNA. Hear me out. From Mary, God was able to show through her son the nurture, the patience, the things that a mother brings into a child's life, the tenderness, the love. Jesus embodied these things. He learned them from his mother, and he was able to give them to the people all around him, that tenderness, that patience, that care. But you see, it was more than just Mary's DNA. That's who the nature of God is as well. For though he was human, he was also fully divine. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Jesus is God. And he shows to us who God is. God brought him the babe, the son of Mary, so that we could understand the tenderness, the care, the compassion of the Father for us. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 6 through 8 talk about that patience, that tenderness, that care for us. Verses 6 through 8, it says, For existing in the form of God, Jesus did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. His care is for you. His love and His compassion is directed your direction. 
He is Emmanuel, the bridge between God and us. It's a two-way street. He makes the way capable for us to go to God, but he also came for us. O come, O come, Emmanuel, we just sang. What a powerful song of who Jesus is. But there's something curious about Dix's song. As we read through his poem and we listened to the lyrics, you'll notice that something is, is missing. I don't know if you picked up on it, but there is absolutely no mention of Joseph. It mentions the wise men, it mentions Mary, it mentions, mentions the shepherds, but there is no mention of Joseph anywhere in this, this poem of what child is this? The irony is you can turn to the Gospel of Mark and there is no mention of Joseph in the Gospel of Mark. Matthew, Luke, and John all mention Joseph. They mention him in his characteristics, but you can read through them and you will discover that we have absolutely no words recorded from Joseph's mouth. None. Just his character. Just the man and who he was, the uprightness. It's not to say that he wasn't Jesus' adopted father, for throughout Matthew, Luke, and John, it's recorded time and time again that, that folks acknowledged him as, as Jesus bar Joseph, Jesus the son of Joseph. Again, I, I believe this is no accident. As the video said, it was the custom in those days to put a child across your knees and to name him. I believe Joseph did that took him as his own and adopted him into his family and taught him everything he knew, nurtured that young boy, cared for him. Joseph himself had his own characteristics that we, that we learn from it and, and, and can admire in this father of the Savior of the world. You see, Jesus had these examples in his home that he watched it must have been a tall order for the parents of Jesus to be just that, the parents of the perfect one who could keep the law perfectly. But they did their best, and they had the character necessary. What I want to focus on about Joseph is the fact that he adopted Jesus. A powerful motif for us. This is not by accident that God would bring about the idea that through Joseph, his son would be adopted. For you see, through his son, we are adopted into his family. We are heirs of the kingdom of God. Revelation says that we take on God's name. In chapter 1 it says that, of Revelation, it says that God gives us his name. Your name is no longer your own. When you come to Jesus, you become his child, an heir of the kingdom, and your surname changes. You see, in ancient times, a surname was not just, in my case, Paris. My father's name is John. I would be Sean Bar John, Sean the son of John. That was your surname. Each one of us sitting here coming to Jesus with open hearts, humbly before him, become Bar Jesus, Bar God, or Bot. I shouldn't forget the bot. If you know your Hebrew, that's the gals. Let's include them as well. We are the children of God. His special ones, his heirs, Galatians. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, when the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption. So that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. And because you are sons and daughters, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. God wants us to know who his son is. He is the compassionate one, the patient one, the tender one, the reconciling one, 
He is the one who brings you to the Father and says, this is our family. They are part of the inheritance of the kingdom of God. I give them all that I have, all of my power, all of my spirit. The victory over sin, the victory over death, the victory over the devil is theirs because they have my inheritance. Who is this child? Who is this babe of Mary? Who is this son of God? Who is this child to you?